Welcome back to the channel guys. I hope you're having a beautiful day today and I hope you're ready for what we're gonna read today. I don't know if I'm ready for what we're gonna read today, but I never really do. And somehow it's always still a fun time, so I'm sure today's gonna be no different. I hope you guys are having a good day today. Let me know down below in the comment section if you are. And with that being said, enjoy guys. The first one that we're going to read today is on the Entitled Parent subreddit and it's called Neighbor thinks that her kid's bedtime should decide when I can do my hobbies. My neighbor female 27 has five kids and one more on the way. She doesn't work, she's not ill or anything, just chooses not to, lives off benefits and is all sorts of entitled. Tonight I was working on my brother's birthday present and this included needing to make a few cuts with the chop saw. It was 9pm and I was done by 9.15. In my country the curfew for noise and noise disturbance is 11.30. She then sends me this long Facebook message about how her kids bedtime is 8 p.m. and therefore I need to not use power tools after that time and how I can only use them in the daytime so as to not to wake her kids. I replied saying that I was done now. Bear in mind she sent that message after 10 minutes of noise and I said that I couldn't confine my usage to daytime because I have a job. I could have said a lot more. I felt like saying to her your kids are going to be living with a screaming newborn in a few months so maybe focus on teaching them to sleep without it being perfectly silent but I restrained myself. Even so the very little that I did say clearly set her off. She sent me another paragraph of about her kids needing to be ready for school at 8am and then blocked me. Yeah, that's so wild. It doesn't sound like you're using power tools like every single night, super late at night or something. And if you live around other people, you're going to hear stuff all the time. You can't tell other people, oh, you need to be done by 8pm because that's when my kids go to sleep. Like that person's going to really struggle living around people, I feel like. And yeah, it's not super disrespectful like you're doing it at 2 in the morning or something. The top comment says, I have a shop and I always try to keep the power tools off after 9. The noise bylaw say 11. However, one day in the dead of winter, our furnace died. I wanted to start up my wood stove as I had a wife and two kids and water pipes that I didn't want to burst. I had no small pieces of wood ready. I needed to chop enough to get the fire started at 6am. I absolutely hated my neighbor, but I still felt so bad making noise. I swung the axe four times at the wood pile between our houses and then got the fire going. He told all of my neighbors that I always chopped wood at 6am. Yeah, like the comment under that says, well, you don't want to make a liar of your neighbor, do ya? 6am it is every morning. So a couple of videos ago, we read a post that was called Entitled Coworker Was Not Invited to a Coworker's Birthday Party and thinks that she gets to be an a-hole all day. Update on Entitled Coworker Not Invited to Birthday Party. On Sunday, that Entitled Coworker needed help. Her car broke down. She asked me to give her a ride to the vet. Her dog needed shots. I gave her a ride. She lives a bit far from the vet. So we were in the car together for about 45 minutes. She was actually pleasant and said that she understands why people always reject her. She knows that her personality is awful, but can't seem to shake the victim mindset. According to her, her her upbringing was unmitigated hell. She said that she knows that's no excuse, but she really has tried to be a better person. After hearing her story and what she went through, I wasn't ready to invite her over to hang out, but I had a better understanding of why she is why she is. Pain and rejection and shame. We went out to lunch after we dropped the dog off and we had a few drinks and had some fun. She was actually fun. My boss is in Europe right now. We just had a Zoom meeting with the office. She had a fatal heart attack shortly after I dropped her off on Sunday. Oh no. My last interaction with her was positive. She enjoyed the last couple of hours of her life. Good, but I feel weird. Maybe instead of seeing the negative in my co-workers, I should focus on their good qualities. Here one minute, gone the next. Last week, I also had my cat euthanized. Not a fan of June thus far. Her dogs are safe with the person that she willed them to. To the naysayers, yeah, it is a true story, but if you want it to be a lie, you can think that. Oh, wow. That was not the update I expected to read. Oh, that's so sad and unexpected too. Yeah, the top comment, that was a twist I didn't see coming. Good for you for helping her out with her dog. It's nice that one of her last interactions were positive. I'm sorry about your cat though. Mine passed away last Wednesday. June sucks. Yeah, good job with your co-worker OP. And yeah, sorry about your cat. Wow, that's so wild. I didn't expect that. The comment under that says, wow, thank you open heart for responding to her in need. Ending up resolving an issue in your mind and giving her a fine send off. Life is weird. Yeah, and also the one under that. It's tragic that you passed, but you had a great day. Thank you for being there for her. You could have ignored her request. You gave her that one special day and she had a friend, if only for a day. Yeah, wow, that's so bittersweet. I didn't expect that. But yeah, good job. OP. Okay, we're moving over to the Am I the A-hole subreddit. Am I the A-hole for breaking up with my girlfriend when she tested me? Okay, so before we even start this, I feel like I'm gonna say no, probably not. You shouldn't really be testing your partner. When I was 16 years old, my girlfriend broke up with me. I was pathetic and I begged her to change her mind. I thought I was in love and I couldn't be without her. I was an idiot. I'm 25 now and I've promised myself that I'll never do that again. I've had several relationships and a few hookups and when they end, I'm sad, but I'm not weak. I'd been with my girlfriend for 
a year and a half. We met at a social function for people in our line of work. We hit it off and we started seeing each other more often and then made it exclusive. Recently, we've been talking about moving in together. Our city is expensive and we thought we could save some money. Her apartment's bigger than mine, but I own mine, so we're working stuff out. Last weekend out of nowhere, she says that we're moving too fast. Okay, no problem. We didn't make any plans that can't be undone yet. Nope, she said that she wanted to break up because she wasn't sure that I was all in. I said, okay. And then she freaked out. Apparently, it was a test to see if I would fight for her. Oh, not this stuff again. Yeah, I don't do that anymore and I don't appreciate mind games. So I told her that I'd box up anything of hers that might be at my place and she could pick it up. She accused me of being a cold-hearted a-hole that was only using her for horizontal mumbo. I wasn't. I thought we had a future. I wasn't ready to propose or anything, but I thought she was the one. We had met each other's families and she'd spent Christmas with us. My parents and sister love her. I loved her. My mum and dad called me to ask what was going on and I told them they think I'm being stubborn. My little sister says that I'm being a complete jerk for not forgiving my ex. I remember crying myself to sleep over a girl and I refused to deal with it again. Am I the gay hole? No, you're not the gay hole, OP, and it's not about that. It's about the fact that you don't play games with your partner, you know? Like, testing each other is so toxic, and that shouldn't be the way that you have to prove to somebody that they mean a lot to you, or like you're actually all in in the relationship. Like, that shouldn't be judged by testing each other. Yeah, the top comment, not the gay hole. Couples shouldn't test each other. A person puts their trust in their partner. She accused me of being a cold-hearted a-hole that was only using her for horizontal mumbo. Translation, she didn't want to take responsibility for her actions and shifted the blame onto you to make herself feel better. Not the gay hole. Nobody likes being the subject of weird relationship mind games and the people that do it are always so surprised when they get dropped because of it. You can find someone better, somebody confident in their relationship with you. And yeah, this one too. Not the gay hole. You don't play with people's feelings like that for a test. That's not okay. People that do stuff like that really need to grow up. Yeah, 100%. I don't know if like you should be thinking that you're weak in the past. I don't know if that's the right mindset, OP. But yeah, I don't feel like you're the yay hole. Yeah, this comment too, not the yay hole. Anyone who decides to test your loyalty and love in a way designed to hurt you and make you beg for them doesn't deserve you. Yeah, it really does sound like a mess around and find out sort of situation. It reminds me of like when somebody cheats on somebody and then they break up and then they say to their partner, oh, why didn't you fight for me? It's like I'm not the one that needed to be fighting. I trusted you and loved you and believed in the relationship. You're the one who didn't. Yeah, it's super whack and I don't feel like you're the yay hole in this situation, OP. But also please don't get in the mindset of feeling like it's weak to have emotions or something because that sort of attitude is also really toxic. But yes, yeah, scaring your partner into feeling like you're going to break up with them as a test, that's unbelievably toxic. Okay, the next one that we're going to read is called Am I the Gay Hole for Selling My Late Wife's Cake Recipe to a Bakery? My late wife passed three years ago. Our two kids were in their late 20s at the time. It's been a hard few years and it's even harder now that I live alone. She had a lovely dark chocolate cherry cake. It was my favorite thing that she would make and I always requested it for Father's Day. I'm a crap baker and I've tried to remake it from her notes. The notes aren't very clear and it never turns out correct. It's depressing spending so much time in it being wrong. I have asked my two kids to try and make it, but they've refused to. I was told that they won't figure out the recipe and to stop asking. I went to a local bakery and I asked them to figure it out. They agreed as long as I gave them the permission to sell the cake in the store. It didn't take them long to figure it out and it's almost the exact same to the one that my wife made. I bought one for Father's Day and my kids were happy about the cake until I told them the bakery did it. They were pissed that I would sell their mother's recipe to a bakery. This whole week they've been telling me how I'm a jerk for this and I'm wondering if I really am a jerk. I just wanted to eat her cake again. No, I don't feel like you're the a-hole OP. When somebody says, oh, you're a jerk for selling it to a bakery, it makes it sound like your intentions of selling it are to like get money out of it. But like you said, you couldn't figure out the recipe, so you went to somebody who does that for a living and they figured it out. You just missed the cake. Your intentions weren't bad. If you had bad intentions for doing it, then yeah, you would be the a-hole, but I don't understand why they think you're the a-hole. Yeah, the top comment. I think of it as a way for your wife to live on in what she created to bring happiness to others. It's not like you did it for the money. Would the bakery consider using your wife's name as part of the item name? Yeah, not the a-hole. And OP said, I highly doubt it and I'm not going to ask. They've already done so much for me and they gave me the recipe with clear instructions. I'm not going to bother them about their cake name. I'm just happy that I can eat it again. Yeah, and fair enough, OP. Oh, that's so sad and I'm sorry about your wife, OP. There's also a comment here that says info. What happened to selling it? In the post title, you mentioned selling the recipe to the bakery, but in the post body, it sounds like it was a trade in exchange for actually figuring out the recipe. And OP said, well, yeah, I guess trade would be better. Either way, the bakery sells the recipe now. They got the cake off me and to pay for it, they figured it out. Yeah, I feel like that's fair enough, OP. And I don't feel like it's fair that your kids are calling you an a-hole. OP said in a comment here, the kids hate that a random person owns and is selling mum's cakes. And like the comment under that says, I'd reframe it as more people get to enjoy the magic of her cake. Yeah, 
100%. It doesn't have to be negative. Yeah, like this other comment says, not the yeho. Your children have no right to complain about this. They were fine with it when they were enjoying the cake, weren't they? They didn't want to attempt the recipe. The bakery did. Everybody gets to have cake again. Yeah, I don't feel like it needs to be viewed as something negative. And also, it's not your fault that you couldn't make the cake, OP. Like, you missed the cake, you couldn't make it, your kids wouldn't try to make it. So you went to somebody who could make it. And now other people who go to the bakery can also enjoy the cake. I don't think that's bad. And I definitely don't feel like you're the a-hole, OP. You had good intentions. Wow, the next one that we're going to read. My pregnant wife's sister offered to sleep with me. My wife, 24 female and I, 24 male, have been together for three years and married for about six months. We found out that we're going to be parents and we're both very excited. We told our families over the weekend and everybody was happy for us. This morning, I got a text from my wife's sister, 21 female, saying that she knows that women can get emotionally and physically abusive and can put a stop to intimacy during pregnancy and that she's willing to quote-unquote help me out anytime sexually or emotionally during and after the pregnancy. Obviously, I have no interest in anybody other than my wife, but how do I tell her what her sister offered? My wife has always been there for her sister and they've always been super close. Her sister was the maid of honor at our wedding. I don't want my wife to lose that bond and it would destroy her if she found out that her sister was willing to betray her like that. At the same time though, her sister is a snake and is willing to ruin our marriage and the life of her soon-to-be nephew or niece. For what I'm guessing is a childish crush on me. My first priority is my wife and unborn child and anybody else can go to hell. How do I approach this situation? There's literally no good outcome. I can tell my wife tonight. She'll be absolutely devastated. I'll always be there for her and I know her parents will be on her side. But losing a 20-year bond with her own sibling while in such a vulnerable state sounds terrible. How can I possibly tell my wife that the sister that she loved and looked after for so many years wanted to sleep with her husband while she was pregnant? If I don't tell her soon and tell her later, she may lose her trust in me. If I don't tell her at all, my wife will be close with somebody who clearly does not care for her and could easily betray her again in the future. Yeah, oh my god, you definitely need to tell your wife, OP. Your wife's sister is the one who said that to you. Definitely tell your wife about it immediately. If you're not honest with your wife about it immediately, OP, it could get super ugly. Like your wife's sister might try to say all sorts of stuff about you, OP. Yeah, the top comment. Sorry, dude, you have to tell your wife tonight. Otherwise, sister-in-law is going to try to twist it and try to make it look like this was your idea. Yeah, I hope you screenshotted her text, OP. And like the comment under that said, exactly. Key, show your wife the text. It's proof that your wife's sister was hitting on you, not the other way around. It'll also show your wife that you're not hiding anything and not attempting to hide anything. I don't think you can avoid hurting your wife at all in this situation, but you can at least minimize any hurt by being open with her. And if your wife asks you why you didn't show her sister-in-law's text as soon as you read it, tell her the truth about that too. You didn't know how to handle it and you didn't want this situation to hurt or worry her. Keep this in mind going forward as a general rule, not a specific one. Most of the pain inflicted by this kind of situation will be spared by partners trusting each other to be open and to be open with them about anything. Think about that. How would you feel if five or ten years from now, you found out that your best friend was repeatedly making passes at your wife and even if he wasn't doing it anymore, would that make any difference to the way that you felt about her? Yeah, could not agree more. You have to tell your wife OP. And also show your wife this Reddit post if you want to too. Be like, hey, I didn't know what to do. I even asked people on Reddit. But the bottom line, the cornerstone of this is that you always have to be honest with your wife OP. If you're not and you try and hide it, it's only going to make it worse. Because yeah, like you said, the sister-in-law is a snake and you don't know what she's going to do. So yeah, make sure your wife knows about it immediately. And I also feel like you should think about how you would feel if you were your wife. And I'm pretty sure if you were your wife in this situation, you'd be hoping that your partner would be honest and actually tell you about it. Because yeah, you can't break that trust that you have between you and your wife OP. And yeah, the sister-in-law sucks. But it was her choice to say that and it's not your responsibility to hide it. Also, like this comment says, Not the a-hole. This is a very simple solution OP. Rip the band-aid off and tell your wife. Your wife's sister betrayed you, your wife, your marriage and her family the second that she tried to inject that toxicity into your relationship. This type of person is the same kind of manipulative excrement that'll turn around and say that she was testing your loyalty to her sister, your wife. If you give her any warning at all that you might tell your wife, don't give her the opportunity to manipulate. Tell your wife the truth before she even has a chance to twist facts and destroy your marriage. Your wife's devastation will pale in comparison to pussyfooting the situation in a way that calls your loyalty into question. Sister needs to be dealt with swiftly and decisively now. She did the mess around part and now she needs to find out and it's better now than later. Yeah, definitely. Good luck with that, OP. The next one that we're going to read is called Am I the a -hole for not being grateful for my birthday surprise? I've been crying for hours yesterday and today, receiving texts on how I'm ungrateful. This crap doesn't make any sense to me. I'm trying to see the good intentions, but call me blind because I don't see any. I've never had a birthday party or dinner and it's something that I've always wanted, but I don't know why. I always thought it was unattainable in my adult life. I was talking 
to my friend and telling her how my family never celebrates birthdays because my dad is really religious and how I always feel lonely on my birthday. She asked me why I didn't celebrate my birthday now that I was an adult. And I thought, yeah, why don't I celebrate myself now that I'm grown up? I planned myself a birthday dinner at a fancy restaurant and I told everybody that as long as they kept their order under 35, I'd pay for it. So I made sure to work overtime for three months in advance because I heard there's always a fight about the bill. So I didn't want that to be a reason for conflict on my birthday. I invited 12 people that said they'd come. Family and friends, which include my mum now that my daddy's dead. She's no longer super religious for some reason. Yesterday, I had my nails, makeup and my hair done professionally. I just wanted to look really nice. And I've actually only been to formal events like three different times in my life. So I was happy to be able to dress up nicely for once. I got to my dinner, sat at the table and waited two hours. And I kept getting calls from people telling me they were running late to not being able to come anymore. And after two hours, everybody finally told me that they weren't coming. They didn't tell me before the dinner. They were all telling me at the time of the reservation or later. The waiter felt so bad because I was crying while I was on the phone with somebody I considered to be my friend, telling me that she wasn't coming for me and that even though I didn't order a meal, he gave me a free birthday slice. I didn't even get any pictures in my outfit because I thought somebody would help take them for me at the restaurant. And by the time I left the restaurant, my makeup was ruined. My mum called me on my way home and asked me to stop at her house because she had a present for me. She said she's sorry that she didn't come, but she was feeling extremely unwell and she wanted to have a present at least. I go to her house and I open the door to a surprise and people say that my face was all messed up because I'd been crying. So someone says, oh, she thought that we forgot her. And I look at the 12 people that were invited to my dinner and I'm just disappointed that they traded what I wanted for my birthday for this. They left me stranded and humiliated at a restaurant for hours. I left a surprise party after five minutes and I just told my mum to keep her present to herself. I'm sorry, but am I the gay half for not seeing a good intention here? Am I overreacting? No, definitely not OP. And that's not a good way to do a surprise. Like what? Put you through that at the restaurant, making you feel awful, and then give you a surprise party that you didn't even want? That's not fun. Yeah, like this comment says, not the a-hole. That's an awful surprise. Tear you down and make you feel awful first? I mean, really, who does that? And the top comment too, not the a-hole. You planned what you wanted for your birthday. Your friends and family completely disregarded that, lied to you, and left you feeling ignored and unwanted wanted on your birthday. They may have had the best of intentions, but that paves the road to hell. In the end, it's not intentions that matter, but results. Had they done this any other day, things would have worked out well. Instead, they left you alone and feeling unwanted. In no way, shape or form are you to blame here. And OP said, I just don't understand how they thought it was a good idea. Yeah, either OP. It doesn't even make any sense. And I feel like it's pretty obviously not a good idea too. Like, oh yeah, make you feel like crap and then surprise you. Why? That's so awful. Oh, that sucks, OP. I'm sorry that you had to do Deal with that. But yeah, of course you're not the a-hole. I hope you can find some good people that don't do stuff like this. Okay, the last one that we're going to read is on Am I Wrong? Lady on a plane starts preaching loudly. I respond in kind. I had a flight cancelled and rescheduled thanks to the storms last week. After the rebook flight landed, but before we deplaned, a woman near us loudly declared that we should all thank Jesus that our flight made it and that we should give him a round of applause. I began clapping and yelled, Woohoo! Thank you, Satan. You rule. I got a dirty look from my girlfriend. Two different ladies in the row in front of us admonished me. One of them said she has her beliefs and you have yours. I told her the difference was I wasn't loudly bothering her with mine. I was merely responding to her preaching. On the way home, my girlfriend told me I caused an unnecessary human interaction and I shouldn't have said anything. Am I wrong? Yeah, this comment. On the way home, my girlfriend told me I caused an unnecessary human interaction. I hate to tell you, but I think your girlfriend is an alien spy. <laughs> unnecessary human interaction? Yeah, I thought that sounded funny too. And like this comment says, I'd rather thank the two people up front who know how to, you know, fly the damn plane. Yeah, 100%. But are you wrong, OP? I don't really think so. Unnecessary, yeah, probably. Like the whole thing seems kind of obnoxious. Yeah, like this comment says, wrong, I don't think so. It was probably unnecessary, but I don't know if I'd say wrong. Your girlfriend really said an unnecessary human interaction? Are you dating a robot? Yeah, and the comment under that says, unnecessary is a good way to describe this entire situation. Yeah, definitely, none of this needed to happen. But does that mean you're wrong? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a little bit, but not really. I feel like the best thing to do would have been to ignore it. There's a comment here that says, listen, on Reddit, this is funny. In real life, it's just adding to the irritation of somebody being loud and unnecessary. I would have wanted you both to shut the hell up, to be honest, precisely because of what your girlfriend said. Yeah, for sure. I definitely agree with that. If I was on this flight, I would have been like, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm sure you're not like a bad person or something, OP. Like you're not an a-hole. But yeah, instead of adding to the situation, I feel like you should have ignored it. And I feel like that's enough for today. That was such a wild episode and I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Let's read something a little bit more wholesome. My single mum. Stress and bills, bad work hours, single parent. Me. Good morning, honey. What do you want for breakfast? Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's so beautiful. An absolute champion is what that is. And that would be so hard as well to be a single parent. Shout out to all the single mums that are trying their best. I heard a commotion in my kids' room after I put them to bed. I listened outside their door and I figured out that my seven-year-old had allowed my four-year-old into her bed to cuddle and sing to him because he was feeling scared. These two fight each other all day, but show up when it counts. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> and yeah, that's so funny. Fighting all day long, but they really do care about each other. That's so awesome. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time today. If you did, make sure you let me know down below in the comment section. And also subscribe because I make these episodes all the time. And also like if you enjoyed the episode. And the comment of the day today goes to Jumilation. I was trying to figure out the zombie and villager drama in the background while listening to the stories. Yeah, it's so fun having the Minecraft in the background, isn't it? I did have my Minecraft set so the time didn't change and the weather didn't change and stuff. But thanks to you guys and your comments, I've changed it so the weather does change and the time of day does change. Because yeah, it's so cool how during the episode it goes from being nighttime to daytime to raining. And yeah, having zombie villagers running around and stuff. I like it a lot and I'm so happy that you guys do too. And yeah guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!